Hello class, do you remember this problem we were doing today in our lesson? What we had here was a typing experiment, typing competition. There were 10 students anyway, and we were trying to work out how many words could they type per minute and how many errors do they make per minute when they're typing. And these are the data points that we've got here, students A through to J. So what I've done is I've just come into a Google Sheets document. You can do the same sort of thing in Microsoft Excel. Uh, any type of spreadsheet program, you should be able to do what we're doing here. And in this column here, in column A, I have put 40, 53, 20, 65, 35, 60, 85, 49, 35, 76. These are the number of words per minute that the students typed. And similarly, in this column here, 11, 15, 2, 24, 22, 30, 16, 27, 25. All right. So we've got all of our data in there. That's often the hardest bit when you're doing this sort of work to make sure you, you get it all right as you put it in. Okay. Now, our goal is to plot this on a set of axes and to also then put a line of best fit through the data points. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag across so that I've got everything and then insert a chart. And it's saying, oh, do you want that sort of chart? It's not too bad, I guess, but it's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to change my chart type over here and I instead want to find a scatter. Sometimes it's called an XY scatter, but some sort of scatter plot is what we want here. Okay, so that's all good. Um, it's not perfect though, but I think you can see already the, the sort of pattern emerging there. It's sort of going up to the right, isn't it? Okay, so how can we improve this? What do you think we can do to make this better? Yeah, I agree. So we, we need to label our axes, don't we? We need to put a title on this thing as well. Uh, so let's start with this horizontal axis. Now the horizontal axis, that's the independent variable. That's the thing that doesn't depend on the other thing. And remember in this situation, the number of errors depends on how many words you're typing. You can imagine if you only type one word a minute, you probably won't make too many errors, right? So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say, Let's change the horizontal axis title right here. Um, maybe something like words per minute. Words per minute is what I want. Cool. And uh, that's showing up there. I'm, I'm happy with that already. And then here I'm going to right click and I'm going to go on the vertical axis. I'm going to say errors per minute. Like that. Errors per minute. Errors is one of those words where it always looks wrong to me. It's always a bit of a weird word to me. Do you have words like that? Uh, okay, now for a chart title, what do you reckon a good chart title should be? I'm normally not very good at coming up with good ones. So, shall we call it um, errors... Per minute versus words per minute. I told you I was no good at doing this. <laughs> Errors per minute versus words per minute. That'll do. I'm going to put that in the middle like that. Okay, how else could we improve this? Well, first of all, yeah, we want to have a line of best fit, definitely. So where do we find that? Back in the bad old days, you had to do that by hand, but now computers will do it for us. So customize over here. And the reason I can never find it is because it's here in series. And we'll just put a trend line on there. And linear, I think a linear trend line is the way to go. There's probably some other options there as well, but I wouldn't really worry about that. You can even put the equation of the trend line on there if you want to. Um, but I don't want to do that right now. I just want to just put the trend line itself because all, all I really want to see is what's the general trend of the, the data, you know, and it seems to 
bear out what we thought would be the case. As we type more and more words per minute, we're getting more and more errors. We're going upwards, basically, like that. Okay, uh, a couple of other things maybe. Well, you can see this horizontal axis is starting at 20. And I would prefer it to go through the origin. So uh, on the horizontal axis here, let's make the minimum value zero. Okay. And I don't like the fact that this guy here is being chopped off. So on the vertical axis, let's make the maximum value. Uh, where are we? Let's make the maximum value. There we go. The maximum value should be, I don't know, 40. 40 sounds good enough. So that's a pretty good chart. Um, depending on what you're putting here, you might need to put the units. So if the horizontal axis was time, you put seconds. If the vertical axis was um, mass, you might put kilograms there. But in this case, we don't really need to put those, those on. And by the way, you can always sort of change the size of this thing, depending on how you want to do it. And these little dots up here are quite useful as well. So if you click on those, you can download that chart and plop it into your document. You might be writing a Word document or a LaTeX document or something like that. So I'm just going to get a ping and I'm going to open that up. And how cool is that? Now I can take that and put that somewhere else. I can plop it into some other work file that I'm working on. So hopefully that's enough to get you started with plotting your data points. And remember, you know, with the experiment that we're doing at the moment, on this horizontal axis, it's going to be, uh, what's that? The temperature of the water in degrees C. And on the vertical axis, it's going to be the time taken for the tablets to dissolve in seconds.